Can you, is, is my um, sound okay? Because I can't use this microphone. I don't know why. I have to use the microphone from my webcam and I don't know. It, it's okay? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and is, is this sound okay? Yeah, it's perfectly fine. It's great. Sounds like you have some kind of uh, great audio setup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need I, I need this one too. I think I was I got this eventually, and I'm so pleased I did. It's really good. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. it's worth it. Hello, hello. Hi, so, hi. Well, it's it's lovely to meet in person. Yeah, I uh, think <laughs> this too. It's yeah, it's really exciting for me because I always fear that my um, English is too bad, and if I try to just talk, it's okay. But sometimes I try to translate from German to English in my head and then I get confused and, you know, I forget all words and I hope it will be okay. I'm sure we'll manage. And um, like I said in the emails, I'm very grateful that you're going to have the conversation in my language and um, that makes it a lot easier for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Would be a lot easier for me if you uh, speak German, but um, yeah, languages. There, it's amazing, yeah. really, isn't it, that we've human beings developed in such isolation from each other that we literally speak different languages. Quite. That's true. Something. That's true. But some words are really similar in many languages. Yes, because we all influence each other, and English yes. and German have got lots of. Well, the whole connection between England and Germany is very close. Yeah. I don't know, did Jessica tell you anything about me? A little bit, but that's a good place to start. Tell me some stuff about you. Oh, <laughs> okay. Some stuff is um, not very specific. But oh, I... Tell me the relevant stuff that's relevant okay. to this conversation. Okay, okay, okay. Um, for me, for sure, non-duality is important for me. But no, no, not non-duality, that's wrong. Um, maybe the opposite, because I had this really bad experiences with non-duality and this whole belief system. I think it was good for me for some years. I was involved with these teachings for, I don't know, seven or ten years. In the last th uh, three years, very it was very intense. I was... Um, really in this mindset of I want enlightenment and I want to get what these people are saying and when I will get it, then I will be free from mm -hmm. suffering. This was my intention to <laughs> follow these people. And yeah, but in the end, it led to led me into a really dark place of um, depersonalization, derealization, depression, anxiety, uh, really bad fear. I don't know if I experienced such a fear in, in my life ever, mm -hmm. really. And um, then I had to <laughs> question these teachings. And it, it, it was clear to me that I couldn't go on like this. I, I had to leave this belief system because it really it, it would have destroyed me at some point and that's six years ago I think and since then then I'm trying to yeah I don't know not not really find something new but find find different perspectives on things mm -hmm. mm. Because I really, I really think some parts of non-duality are really dangerous, and um, yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you. So the two things: when you said you hoped, you know, you were after enlightenment, I understand exactly what you're saying, and 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 it would end suffering. Did you get? Were you drawn to this in the first place because you were suffering? Yeah. Or, okay. So that yeah. your your entry into it was was because you felt you were suffering in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it started with Eckhart Tolle and the book Power Power of Now. Right. You know yeah. it, I think. And yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like it resonated a lot with me because I think we all know this feeling of being in the here and now, and uh, that this feels great somehow, and 
um, it started like this and that was okay. That was, um, I had some great experiences with this feeling of being in the here and now and practicing being more in the here and now. But at some point it was like, okay, this is not enough. Hmm. There has to be more to it. I would like to really dive into it. And then I looked into this whole philosophy and um, met different teachers and it got deeper, deeper, deeper and more extreme. Um, was, that a, was there a particular teacher or teachers that was part of that journey for you? Or yeah, but, but um, these were German teachers, so oh, okay. yeah. I don't think you know them. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but the last teacher I was with who really fucked me up uh, was a student of Ramesh Baisekal. Ah. You know him. <laughs> yes, yes, I met Ramesh. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, you have your own journey with this yeah. too, and um, I'm curious what you, how you um, got out of this mindset of no doership, mm -hmm. because this teacher, I, this German teacher, was like, okay, you have to realize that there's no doer, there is no thinker, no um, experiencer. And no, no doer and blah, and you, you have to see this and then you will be free. So this was my idea that I have to get this somehow. And he had some, I don't know if Ramesh used these pointers also, but he had some kind of like inquiries you have to do to realize this. And I did all this really extreme till I came to the point of, okay, now I really feel what they are talking about. I really feel like I have no control whatsoever. And, but this didn't feel liberating for me anymore. It, it really, it, it was like, I don't know, mind blowing terror to say it like this. I, oh, it, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's horrible. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I have some idea. I, it, it, I didn't, stay with the Ramesh well the ideas for very long it was a part very short phase for me um uh, and I did it didn't lead to depersonalization or derealization so but these are horrible ideas mm. and and delusional and you're and you have to work really really hard to get them to take them on because yeah. they're so foreign you have to commit yourself. You have to be. You have to commit to taking them on. Yeah, and that's true. and it, that's a very cult-like phenomena, which you see in all sorts of different cults in different ways. Um. So yeah, there's a whole load in there. I mean, there's there's a whole there's there's stuff around no doer. There's stuff around being in the moment. Why does that feel so good? Um. Uh, there's a lot we can explore. And, yeah. and and see if it, see like you said at the beginning I see that we can understand the positive side that that feels good and why it does yeah without getting sucked into this delusional misanthropic ugly th denial of the very best things in human existence that's that's beautiful yeah um... that, that's that's yeah. Okay. So, where do you want to go? Which one? Should, where should we yeah, go? To? I I heard you talking about your that you had some experience of no doership. Yep. Um. So, and uh, I know it's a very powerful experience. So, yep. how? <laughs> um. Where was the point that you were questioning this? Because when you feel it, it seems like it's really true. Mm -hmm. So. Um, well, what happened for me, and I've moved on from this as well now, but but I very qu fairly quickly. I mean, the, one of the things to really see, see, you're probably aware of this. You might not be though, because you know you're a lot younger than me. And is that this is all quite new in the West? You know, when I was, uh, I didn't come across it until I was in my thirties, and I'd been exploring since I was in my early teens. And so it didn't really surface here. And, he, and when I was exploring it to begin with, no one knew, you know, if you said, oh, I'm, I'm interested in non-duality, anyone in spirituality would just give you a blank look, like, I don't know what that is. So 
it 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 exploded really about twenty five years ago, mm. and and uh, so it's it's a recent phenomena. Um, it's a Western version of a already quite troublesome Eastern tradition. Um, my what I've seen in my life is this massive embrace of Eastern Indian specifically philosophy, as if it's just true. So a lot of people we were very critical of western religion and then just embraced eastern religion and and now it's time to look at that critically and go how oh, hang on a second this is this has got its own problems mm. and it and it really has it just yeah. seemed very different and exotic and experiential yeah so, um so that's a bit of background um and very quickly what what i did was i moved to a much more benign um approach to non-duality which was a kind of which i was a both and approach so it was like it wasn't saying you're not a person it was going there is a there is a a, a deep part of you which is one with everything and then there's your separate individual and they're both important but that's not really you there's a bigger part now i think that's wrong now but it didn't have that effect of denying um the individual so it didn't it didn't initiate those kind of problematic experiences that you're describing mm -hmm. uh it was still wrong i think it was still i it took me a while quite a while to see what was wrong with it because like you i was looking for i was thinking well yeah, but there's something good here isn't there really really good and it's experiential and one of the things which is i'm in danger of jumping onto too many topics all at once but one of the one of the real breakthroughs from me and it's really obvious and i can't believe it took me so long was to see that just because i experienced it a certain way didn't mean it was true yeah yeah and it's really obvious to me now because i look around and i see it you know everyone you talk to a fundamentalist christian they're experiencing it that's why they think it's true and yet to me it's obviously not true but for them, it, and so breaking that assumption, that that self-verifying loop, that because I'm experiencing it, so you experience as no doer, therefore it must be true, mm. or you're experiencing something, it seems interesting and significant. There may be different ways of understanding what that is, and so what I've ended up with, that th I, I would say, with all of these things, a really key insight for me was and a bit of a shock because it meant that nearly all of my books were wrong in this only in this one aspect not not completely but in this <laughs> kind of fundamental aspect was around what what we mean by consciousness mm -hmm. once so for me now if i put it really quickly it seems obvious that what i mean by consciousness i am conscious of what i pay attention to and that as i move my attention around wherever i put my attention i am conscious of that so my favorite example is your left foot. Now, I bet you weren't conscious of your left foot before I said that, but by thinking it, you go, oh yeah, my left foot, and now you're conscious of it. And it, what, so what it looks like is that we're taking in all this information all the time, and then some of it really matters to us. Most of it, you don't want to be bothered with. And so the system very wisely in the evolutionary pro process has learned to prioritize. Mm -hmm. And whatever it prioritizes, it, it processes it in high definition and it's very vivid and it's like this and whatever it doesn't prioritize it's in very low definition and you don't even notice it consciously but it's taking in so for instance if something if, if unconsciously i picked up something which seemed important my attention would go to it or when mm. you're asleep at night you know you're fine you're dreaming you're not conscious of anything maybe at all not even dreams but if someone comes in the room you pick that up unconsciously and then your attention's there. That's a very different, much more obvious view of consciousness. And what it does is it goes, oh, so what if when I experience there's no doer, it's because I'm not paying attention to me doing stuff. So that what I'm conscious of, and I can do it now because I've got, you know, I got used to it. I can, I, so if I shift my state, there's a flow of experience happening and I'm just witnessing it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm still saying this, look, <laughs> it's just, I'm not paying attention to the process by which I say it. That's just happening 
relatively unconsciously. Mm -hmm. I understand. And I think, yeah. So I think what's happening with these states when people go, oh, there was no self. It's like, well, you weren't paying attention to the self. It's a bit like, you know, it would be ridiculous, I think, to most people. If I said I went to sleep last night and uh, I had a dream vivid, and, and this world just didn't exist. It just didn't exist. You go, well, it did. You were lying in the bed asleep. You just weren't paying any attention. No, 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 it didn't exist. You don't understand. It didn't exist. It's like, no, no, it did exist. You were just asleep in the bed. And a bit like that. It's like you thought there was, you think there's no self or there's no time. It's a very common mm. one. Mm. And these are powerful experiences and valuable, lovely experiences. You come into a place and it's, there's nothing, there's nothing to change. That just this presence. And, but then you come back and you've been in it for 20 minutes because, <laughs> because you were in it. You were in it. You were realizing it's all one. You were realizing these states. You were realizing there's a place mm. where you can experience timelessness. And the fact that you weren't aware of you doing that is just to do with the nature of attention. Mm. Just where you put your attention. Yeah, that's super interesting because I think this whole phenomenon of depersonalization, for me, I cannot general, generalize this, but for me, it was like I paid so much attention to myself. It's like I, I watched myself 24-7 doing stuff that it somehow separated me from just being myself. Yes. Um, yeah, and this has to do with attention. So yes. before this, my attention was, I don't know, more outside or in, I don't know, some percent attention was on me, and but the more attention on the outside. And somehow these watching myself shifted my attention to completely to myself and then everything got really weird mm. um so so one of the things which strikes me is that it's a real it's kind of like the human superpower in some ways it's like we can we can reflect on our processing we can't reflect on much of it to be honest most of it happens unconsciously but we can reflect like we can choose we can reflect we can <laughs> go we can think there's the you know do would i like to have a conversation with cc or not i think i will you know i can do that i can reflect on things so let's imagine for a moment let's let's see it from a complete forget the non-dual perspective and just go look there's me i'm a system the, the the oneness of the universe has arisen as a tim the oneness of the universe has arisen as a cc and here we are so i'm a system taking in all this information and processing it and I have this amazing ability to watch myself do it and therefore do it better. Same thing with the attention. So I, if I put attention in the world, I'm much more likely to do something well if I paid attention. The same with mm -hmm. my processing. I'm much more likely to process well if I paid attention. This is why it's evolved. Mm -hmm. So we're witnessing the system function. This, but, but here's the key thing. It's not, I'm not the witness. I'm not this disembodied something. I'm the whole thing witnessing itself a bit mm -hmm. like, you know, it's like I'm touching myself. I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at my processing and that's really healthy. But if then you go, no, none of this is you. You're just the thing watching. That's what you really are. And you should always be in it. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, now you're always in this place of just washing. And, and so the system is now divided against itself. Yeah. It now thinks it's not the whole thing. It's got this weird, literally depersonalized, it's, de it's uncoupled its ability to reflect from the very thing that's actually doing the reflecting. And yeah. that is disastrous. And, yeah. that, and that's what this, this, what is in fact, you know, like a primitive psychology really f is doing. That, mm. I think that's why it's so, that's why it's so unhealthy. Yeah. So yeah. it's taking experiences which in themselves can be really healthy and turning them into things which are unhealthy. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the ab ability to watch yourself is really, it's a good thing to do. Uh, yeah. So you, and it's, it took a long time for me to reflect on this idea and to realize, 
okay, we it's normal that we have the ability to watch ourselves. You you have to recognize when you are hungry. That you have to watch yourself to 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 recognize this, you know? Yeah. So what what does this mean? It doesn't mean anything that we are only the observer. Yes, no. e exactly. No. And if you stop and you stop and look at it, it's a kind of crazy idea. The, the further I've got away from it over, the, over these years, the crazier and crazier it looks. Mm. The idea that there's a thing called pure consciousness or something. It's like, what, what would that possibly be? <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's like, and somehow you're it and I'm it. And it's like, and it's aware and it's looking and, but it's looking, but what, what it's experiencing as you is completely different from what it's experiencing in me, but there is no you and me. Hang on a second. How does, and, and it's, it doesn't, how much simpler, to just go look there's there's one um universe and it's evolved into all of these different forms it's the it's one universe in relationship with itself as all these different systems including you and me and what you are is cc that's the whole point how fantastic that you are this unique beautiful human being unlike any other in this particular place in this particular time on this particular journey and you have the ability to reflect and make choices where you can you can choose co-create your life because you're interacting. You are the one in relationship to itself. And unlike most things in the universe, you you're conscious. You can do that. that I mean, these are things to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And you can think, and that's brilliant. But you don't want to be doing any of those things all the time. You know, if you're reflecting all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, no, reflect all the time. Some of the time, just be right there in, you know, what you're doing or the feeling of hot water on your face when you wash your face or, or just the sun on your back. And there's no reflecting. It's just, ooh, you want that as well. But you can also, when you need to, reflect. Same with thinking. It's like thinking is, is imagining talking to yourself. That's all it is. And like talking it can be really good like this is great but you know if i just sat here and said the same thing over and over again it might not be so good you know if it was if i were in a loop and that's that can happen or i could be really aggressive to myself or to others over and over again so or f fearful then it's not so good but the, in itself it's neither good nor bad it's just talking and yeah it's, just it's um, i think you know this perspective that uh, you cannot choose your thoughts they just pop up and you cannot do anything about it. It just happens by itself and so on. And I believed in this for so long and it got, when I got so um, uh, anxious and depressed and so on because of these things, it was like, oh, fuck, but I cannot do anything about it because I, I cannot choose how to think about it because thoughts just happen and I cannot do anything. I can just sit here and wait and hope to get better. If I don't know, I'm just lucky. Uh, you know what I mean? And it, this, this is so psychologically wrong to, to tell this to people. Awful. They, these people get passive in their life and just sit there and do nothing because they think they can't influence anything. So, so the, 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 the essence of the mistake there, it seems to me, is about identity. So if you've got this, if, you're, if, you know, if you've adopted and pushing this idea that you're not really CC, whatever that could possibly mean, or, or that CC and Tim don't really exist, whatever that could mean, actually, that you're some disembodied, non-material presence, which is, has no qualities and is you know, whatever observing it all that's when you go look you, what you're go, what people are doing is they're going uh, you're when they say you don't choose your thoughts they're going you're the conscious bit you're this consciousness and the consciousness doesn't choose the thoughts but forget mm. that instead if you have an if you have a, an idea of identity which goes well who is tim tim is everything that's ever happened to tim that's who tim is tim is mm. this process which is unfolding most of what functions in Tim is unconscious, and that's a good thing because it doesn't take up so much energy and it 
works pretty well. Like when I walk, I don't go move that leg, move that leg. I just move my legs. It's great. I don't even know how I do it. But I move my legs and I can choose not to if I need to because I can reflect. So then it's like, well, you don't choose consciously your thoughts, but you choose if you're reflecting whether to follow them or not. Yeah. That's, that's the key. Yes, that's, that's the thing. And <laughs> at one point I thought, if they are right, how is it possible that anything got invented? Like, I don't know, space <laughs> shuttles or something like this. How, how is this possible if people just randomly think stuff and cannot choose to follow or not follow, you know? What? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Some something you have to have something I don't know inside of you, which can somehow, like you said, choose to follow or not follow. Yeah. And and, and then and then it's like it's, and what it's what all of this is doing is it's it's belittling, or condemning. Some of the greatest qualities of being human, and honestly, spirituality generally has got a bad track record with this. Mm. And, and, and in my attempts to take the best and leave the worst, I really want to grab the, the beautiful experiences that are available without all of that baggage. Because as far as I can see, you know, it's been 14 billion years to get to individuals who are conscious, can, can reflect, can communicate with words, with others and themselves, through which they can change the way they process. When we finish this conversation, we'll both be different for it. We'll have changed the way we process. We're evolving that fast. That's incredible. Yeah. These are the most valuable things we have that we can, and, and, and new possibilities get thrown up. It's like, I don't, I'm not, I don't know what I'm going to say to you next, obviously, because it's happening too fast, but I can reflect on it. And then I could go, oh, well, actually, that's not right. And, mm. and, and, and correct it, but I'm doing it. And that's wonderful. That's my interaction with the universe. All of those things is what makes us human. And, and they seem really important to me. And what this philosophy does is denigrate and deny all of it and leaves you going, you're not really there. You live in an illusion. Nothing's got any meaning. And the, the power that you think you have of, of choosing even what to believe mm. doesn't exist. Yeah. It's, it's hard to think of anything more nihilistic. And yeah. that's claimed to be liberation. And here's the thing. It's like, if you are suffering in your soul, in your psyche, and you put your attention somewhere else, it will be better. Mm -hmm. Of course it will. Yeah, and that's a yeah, good thing. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. If, if you're having a hard time, you know, if you, if we were, if you, if we were together and you were having a hard time about something, I might go, Hey, just leave that for a bit and come and look at the sunset with me and just pay attention to something else for a bit. And you'd be right there in the moment. And then, but then you need to go back to the thing that was troubling you because it's still there. Yeah. Not, not the idea of eternal escape because mm. I mean, even some of the great traditions, you look at the traditions of the Buddhist tradition and you get that, look, it's the end of suffering. Well, how do you find the end of suffering? Well, giving up being human, stop being attached to people, stop having you know, emotions, stop having thoughts, stop thinking you're a person, you're a you. If you get rid of all that, then of course, but you get rid of everything. Yeah. That, you know, yeah. You're, you're, you're just, you're becoming nothing. Yeah, and it often took me a long is... time to see this, yeah. Yeah. And disaster. And, yeah, and I don't know why I should be nothing here. It makes no sense. It ma For me, it makes no sense that all these teachers are alive somehow because when you really <laughs> yeah when you think you are nothing and you perceive yourself as nothing what you are doing here like just <laughs> it, it's a it's a i don't want to i mean it, obviously there's a lot of charlatans in the world of spirituality uh, partly i mean there's charlatans everywhere of course i mean human beings are duplicitous duplicitous it's not just spirituality um, but it's easier to pull off in, spirit, in spirituality. It's like if I arrive here and I say, well, actually, CC, I think you'll find I'm, I'm a master of physics. It probably would take, if you knew anything about physics, you'd probably find out within two or three minutes, he's not really a master of physics, is he? He does, he's just read a few physics books and he's trying to, you know, he doesn't, he knows that much, but he doesn't know that much. But with spirituality, you know, I can just, I can go, look, I've had this experience and I've learned these simple things. And that gives me authority. 
Mm -hmm. And the more far out it is, the more, woo, the more you can do that. Now, I'm not suggesting that everyone is doing that is, is, is deliberately conning people. But I do think we, as human beings, we look for a role to play. We look for a place that gives us some meaning. All the yeah. things that make us human, all the things they want to deny with the philosophy is the reason I think a lot of people do it. Yeah. Which is why suddenly, with the non-dual thing particularly, what happened was it was so easy to become a non-dual teacher. It was because it was, there wasn't anything to it. So you didn't have to know anything. So bang, suddenly everyone and his mother was a non-dual teacher. And... Uh, that pr proliferated the ideas outwards and outwards and outwards. And, and if you then go, it's the old trick of the religious traditions. If you go, doubt is a bad thing or thinking is a bad thing. How do you ever get out? Mm. How do you get out of something which won't let you think about it? Yeah. And when you think about it, then it's your ego yeah. which thinks about it. And, The, the ego is the bad one so what to believe yeah. it was hard yeah. for me yeah yeah, yeah. I, it, i couldn't trust myself anymore but it's a great thing i'm not trying to downplay the suffering it caused you but you know in a very different way for me when i was in my um late teens and early 20s i was involved in a indian cult and but i'm also grateful to it because i really got to see how it functions yeah. eventually i mean yeah. it, it was hard you know getting out was tough um but in retrospect it's like oh yeah i see mm. and 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 sometimes you, you know, to see it from the inside can it, to see how the how you can get caught in how you how you how you work to take on an idea mm-hmm The, the, the crazy thing is, it's often sold as it's a spontaneous thing. You just need to listen to an awful lot of me talking before <laughs> yeah. you have this spontaneous thing. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you listen to hours and hours and you stop listening to anything else. And then you have the spontaneous thing. Whether it's the spontaneous no-doer or whether it's Christ comes to your soul and you realize that, you know, you've been accepted into the body of Christ or whether it's any of those things there's the the preparation happens and then poof suddenly yeah. that's your reality now is different because now you're that's how you're experiencing it so it now feels self-evident yeah that's the way it is yeah and it isn't self-evident you've made it self-evident yeah yeah that's uh what you mean when you are talking about idea ideation yes yeah yeah, yeah. that we're constantly sensing and making sense of the world and ourselves And that's how a human, you know, every system is doing it. The plant is not doing it very differently, but every system is reading and responding to the environment. Even, even chemicals are doing it. And we're doing it on this level of taking in scent, light and reading light and sound, and, but also ideas which categorize what something is. Yeah. And, and, and put it into a story, into a narrative, because otherwise it'd be useless to us, wouldn't it? I mean, I can see this room, but if I didn't go, it's a room, I'm sitting here, that's where I live, I'm speaking to CC, this is a zoo. I mean, millions and millions and millions of categorizations. That's what ideas are doing. If I then learn a new idea, like it's all in consciousness and I'm don't really, you know, it's all just happening and there's nothing I can do about things, then I'll start to experience that. Yeah. Yeah, the interesting thing or also the, con I don't know, confusing thing for me about this is it, it, it makes total sense, but um, it feels like, okay, if it's like this, I will never know what's true because every experience I have is somehow an idea, okay. you know? And so, so I think then the question is to, to, to dig into what do we mean by true? Mm. And I found this really helpful for me, which I love etymology, you know, the meaning of words, where they come from, the, the origins of words, mm -hmm. um, because often there's a there's a kind of clue as to what it really, you know, how to understand the word. And the English, I don't know what the German equivalent is or whether it's the same, but in English, the word truth, the root means trustworthy. 
And we have that, like, we still have it in English, like we talk about a true friend who's a trustworthy friend or a mm. false friend. False means untrustworthy. So what are we, so if you, if you get that, you get away of the idea of the truth or there's a thing out there called the truth or any of that. And you just go, what we're looking at is, is this narrative, is this belief trustworthy? That's it. So can I trust the idea that I'm sitting in my office talking to CC? Well, I think I can. <laughs> so I, I would say that is true. Can yeah. I trust the idea that I'm the presence of pure consciousness within, you know, w watching everything? Well, maybe, maybe not. I have to look a bit, bit, bit further into that. And the fact that I'm experiencing it should not fool me into thinking that I still don't need to inquire. So it's not that you can never reach the truth because there is no the truth. And that's mm. not because we can't reach it. It's not because it's always beyond. It's a misunderstanding what the word means. It's about finding the most trustworthy way to interact with the world and ourselves mm -hmm. and that will keep changing we just yeah, want to make sure and, and it gets that's better also, it, yeah and it's also very individual i think if you would ask a non-dual teacher he would say to you that his experience is the most trustworthy thing he thinks that yes yeah and then and then it's a matter of going okay well you know, the only person who can evaluate those statements is each individual. But between us, we can engage and question each other if people are up for it. Mm. That's what that's what's so powerful about speech is that we can engage with each other and go, hmm, maybe or maybe not. And then we can actually help each other find more trustworthy ways to interact with the universe. An, an insight which I love, I don't know if this sort of thing appeals to you, but because I have this 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 evolutionary picture of everything in the evolution of any system biological systems let's say it, a plant is looking for the truth in the sense that it wants to it wants to find the light that's what it needs to live and it wants to find the most trustworthy way of doing it so mm -hmm. if it develops a biological mechanism whereby it can find the light accurately it will flourish and that species will do well. If, it, if there's another species which is not so good at that, they will die out because it's not as trustworthy. As we come through, we have learned how to do that biologically and now we're doing it on an ideational level. We are looking for what, how can I ideate, categorize, understand what this is in, what it, this is I'm in, in the most trustworthy way. And it, the, the better we do it, the more likely individually and collectively we are to flourish. And what you discovered was there was a way of ideating this reality which looked like it was trustworthy, looked like it could be the secret to actually living a, a, a suffering free life, but it wasn't trustworthy. And sooner or later it comes crashing down. Yeah. And that's, and that's why being able to reflect is so important because it's it's a chance to not let it come crashing down or when it does to get back up and find something better yeah yeah that's true and that's why to me it's like when i share ideas for me it's i always want to go look this is my best guess this is what i found to be most trustworthy so far um but if there's something better and if i can improve it or if you can help me improve it or then how exciting yeah rather than i mean i've got ramesh's book here the final understanding or the final truth or something like that, um, which I bought from him. You know, I loved meeting him, but I sh you know, part of me should have been going, do, do, do that. <laughs> oh, no. that is, this is, this is, um, and it, and it is a final truth because it's a negative. It's that's, what, it's what seen as, mean? well, it, it's portrayed as a, you know, the final truth, which is ridiculous, but it's done in that way because it's, it's seen as, well, once you've realized that you don't exist and there's no doer and everything, once you've negated everything, oh, okay, yeah. there's nowhere else to go. Yeah. And in that respect, you know, once you have negated everything, then you, then there is nowhere to go. But if you're in a positive evolutionary mm. understanding, there's always further to go. Mm. There's always something new to create and some new possibility you'd never dreamed of, some new experience that will happen. And, and I suspect, you know, our generations after us and after us and after and after will live in, you know, quite a different world. Mm. 
yeah for sure yeah. Uh, what what do you think if s s someone like me <laughs> um who has problems with leaving a belief system behind because it took so much time to to um really i yeah i i it was a lot of time i spent with these teachings and so much time to get it somehow and it made so much sense to me blah 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 and then i want to wanted to leave it behind and it took a long time to come to this point now where i think okay many many things don't make sense to me anymore and i really i don't believe them anymore and i don't think about this and it is great but um and <laughs> I really would like to perceive myself and the world in another way. Um, and I understand that um, this ideation plays a big role in this. So what can I do to, I don't know how to say, it, uh, speed up the process of creating the perception of myself and the world which I want. Do, can you understand what I mean? Um, partly. I need you to say more. You, you, how can you create the perception of the world that you want? What is the perception that you want? Um, before my bad experience with non-duality, I wanted to see that I don't exist because I thought this would help me somehow. So I got to this point. <laughs> and then it was like, okay, no, no, I don't think I want this really. Um, and so I, for me, I, I wish I could really perceive myself as a soul again, like mm -hmm. I did before non-duality, because mm -hmm. it was... I think it is a normal perception. I think you are born with the perception that you have a body and a soul somehow and that is connected and all this stuff. And so I would like to go back to this experience. Partly I, I do, but it's hard work. And sometimes I ask myself, okay, is there something I can do to that this gets easier for me? Do I have to, I don't know, um, work on affirmations or have to I have to sit down and meditate on my soul or <laughs> you know what I mean I do so yeah what do you think um, well one thing I think is that if you can I don't know whether it might, you know, it's a different country but we're doing a retreat in September and if you can come across to that I think you would absolutely love it and your soul would 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 come alive because a part of what I see as the most powerful thing is connecting with other souls and it, you mean it, you mean when you say soul you mean an individual soul right? yes I, I, well i'll tell you exactly what i mean actually for me it's 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 purely experiential the reason that human beings have always in history believed we exist as a body and soul is because we're always experiencing that mm. all the time we're experiencing a physical world of biology and the senses and we're experiencing an imaginal world of the psyche or soul and this conversation has been happening in the soul. Mm. That's where all the meaning is. It's all the, everything, it's an imaginal event. And our bodies have been very patient and just sat in their chairs, apart from my arms, which have to throw themselves around for some reason. But all the action has been taking place in the soul. So the soul is the most emergent level of 14 billion years of evolution, as far as we can make out. And it's huge. And it's so much more than just the little bit that talks to itself. It's, it's massive and beautiful. And spending time with it is really, really important. So there's a million things you can do. But one of the things I suspect is that the more you can free, your, the more you can isolate the good thing and not associate it anymore with the bad thing, um, the better. So, for instance, years ago for yeah. me... <laughs> When, Example, please. <laughs> yes. So, so like, so, so, when I was in this cult a long time ago, I did a lot of meditation. So when I left, it was like every time I meditated, it associated with that, mm -hmm. and it took a while before I could disassociate it and go, look, I'm just being quiet and and finding and exploring, and it's my thing, it's mine, it doesn't belong to that, it belongs to me, 
and now I, it's lovely and it's fine and I don't have any of those associations. So it's setting up a new understanding and new associations and, and seeing what, trying out things, you know, it's a bit like, oh, this is a terrible analogy. Is this a terrible analogy? Am I going to say this? <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to say it and then I might need to retract it, but it's come to my head. So forgive me. I want to go. I'm not sure this is true, but I want to go. It's a bit, you know, it's a bit like, it's a bit like breaking up in a marriage or something. And it's like, you've got so used to this and then you, you you've put your life into it and then you've realized it has been a disaster for you and you, you, you break away and then what are you going to do? Well, you, you just got to start dating again, haven't you? And that <laughs> means you've got to experiment. Try that. How was that? Mm. Try that. Did that work? F follow, read that book, listen to that person talk, find the things that your soul comes alive and goes, yeah, no, that, you know, that intuition of follow that, follow that and see where it leads now mm. and where the next part of your journey will take off. And as that happens, I mean, personally, I have complete confidence it will take off for you, that your soul will just blossom now um, and be richer and wiser than it would have been yeah <laughs> and 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 the other thing which is the part of the confidence for that is th one of the greatest things you can do i would say is to turn the bad thing into something good and that's exactly what it seems like you're doing the invite to talk to me about it and then to share that is turning a bad experience for you into something that can be good in the world yeah that's true I'm so grateful that I started this YouTube channel and started talking about my experience and got so much positive feedback and uh, feedback from people who experienced similar stuff and who say like, hey, I'm so grateful that you are talking about this. It's it's so important. Um, I think Jessica hears this also um, many times. And this is really the first time in my life that it sometimes feel, feels like I... I do something really good <laughs> for many people and for people I, I don't even know. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. that's so beautiful, beautiful. and that great. Is. That's yeah. fantastic. There you go. Yeah. That's your route. Act. That's it. That's and the the, it wasn't even my intention with the YouTube channel. I just wanted to, I, <laughs> in the beginning, I just wanted to talk to myself. It was not like I want to talk to people out there. It was like I, I record myself talking to understand myself better. And I uploaded it to YouTube and thought, oh, nobody will see this anyway. So, <laughs> but then people saw it and people liked it. And um, so it evolved. And Fantastic. Yeah, it's really great. It's, and it helped me a lot, really. So one of the things as well, that I feel like, is that you, is that to... I would suggest that you can still, and maybe you are, you are already, but you know, those states, I would call them not oneness really, but communion. And the reason that I changed my language to talk about communion was became, it became more obvious that the individual was involved, that the, you know, an individual who comes into a state of oneness is a communion of the individual and, 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 and the oneness, the, the individual doesn't ev it disappear. It's the individual that makes it possible. Mm, okay. part of the universe has reached such a level of emergence that it become can become conscious of the fact that it, it is actually one universe that's amazing and because of the connection it is an experience i think of love just uh, of, of, of overwhelming love and that seems to be something which can really it's it, it's such a positive thing to to focus on and it, it, you can, that's the taking the best and leaving the worst for me. Mm. Just there. Yeah. Sometimes when I hear you say, um, you say, you said it before, the sentence like the universe is experiencing itself or something. Can you? How do you say it? I'm not saying yeah. the universe is well. I'm saying look, look that there is a there. It's a one, as well. You know the universe. Look, look at it. <laughs> one thing, all in relationship with itself, and I'm I am that as well. So that 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 that, that there's there's no there's a there's a both andness to it. 
I mean, the, the analogy that, that came to me just today when I was out walking, actually, was I think that trying to explain this, was going, you know, if you take a sheet of paper and you cover it with lots of separate circles, it's still one piece of paper. But now it's divided into all these separate circles. And both are true. And that's mm. what I think is happening, is that the one thing is differentiating. And that's what it's making it evolve from something very, very basic and not very interesting comparatively into this and so that we can meet and we're both completely individual and yet we're like i don't know like like branches on one tree it's like we're different branches completely different we're meeting each other or or my hands it's like you know it's like look at two hands you know going you're, you're a different hand yeah you are a different hand but actually, if you go back far enough, it turns out, oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> They're all part of the same thing. And that sense, and they haven't become any less. It's still a left hand and a right hand. It's just there's also a level beneath it where everything integrates. And yeah, it's, it's, that's the insight, I think. It's hard for me to really understand this because... I was so much into these teachings that uh, when someone, like you, says everything is also one, it's hard to not think about this in this classical non-duality way. Yeah. And also this concept of it is this and this at the same time it's not easy to grasp this. Well, well um, that's why I said, you know, think of the piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. That, for, that's easy to grasp, for isn't sure. it? For, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, for sure. It's, it's one piece of paper covered in different circles. And and, which is it? Well, it's both. That's not difficult. Yeah, but um, somehow it feels like, okay, if this oneness separated in many things and also in, in into me can i still have some kind of independence how is this possible if i understand what you're saying if, these, if, these are really you know deep questions I mean? yeah no really deep questions so so one of the one of the the ideas which is quite prevalent is this this idea you know, like there's the universe which is a you know confusing word really because in spirituality but it's as if it's conscious through Tim. It's like there's there's one thing behind all of this and it's looking at you. And I'm not saying that. It's more I'm saying, look, the one which is differentiated into everything, the singularity which is differentiated into everything, is conscious as Tim. It's conscious. It's a, okay. it, it, as Tim, it's now conscious and making choices. But... Mm -hmm. It's as Tim. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not it behind the scenes like a and, I, and Tim's a puppet. It's, there's nothing yes, behind that, the scenes. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing there. The it's empty behind I, the scenes. I get. Yeah. It's, it's it's this. This is arisen. And as Tim, look here it is. And Tim is Tim, just like you would, just in that common sense view of being a human being. But but literally, you know, just that lovely insight from science. You know, the, the the carbon that makes up my body was made in ancient stars everything has come from somewhere else and and developed mm -hmm. and we are that that doesn't make any, any you know but it's developed into cc who thinks for herself mm -hmm. that's the whole point it's developed it's now it's that that carbon has become cc <laughs> <laughs> and she's not a puppet of anything that's yeah yeah the, that's it that's the point yeah, it's super interesting because it's really hard to understand when you have this non-duality background where oneness means you have no choice and you are a puppet and all this stuff to, to... But I think I understand it better now. Thank you for explaining. It's, it's still kind of abstract, but... Um... Yeah, it's an interesting idea. And um... here's the difference, because it is literally abstract. You know, you can't sense the oneness. You have to what I call sci sense it or intuit it. 
because you can't sense it. You can, you know, all you can sense is this little bit <laughs> that you're in, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But from that, you can understand and then experience the oneness. But here's the difference for me. Maybe is when I started on this little portion of my journey, which is really not that long. I mean, six years, five, six, seven years, this little bit. I noticed this shift and at first, my worry at first was, oh, I'm going to lose the experience, this change in understanding. I'm going to lose this lovely experience I have. Mm -hmm. And then it, I realized I was having the same experience. It was better because what I had, it may be different for you, but what I had was if I do it now, I, I, if I do it from the old model, I'm now outside everything. I'm the empty space within which everything's just changing of itself and I'm this presence and it's, and I've literally transcended it. I'm outside of it as this imagined presence of awareness and everything's just unfolding. And that's a pretty interesting way to see things. If you're not, you know, I, I don't want it now. This way, if I move it around, there's a fundamental oneness of the all which is arising as all of this unique differentiation, including Tim. And Tim, which is me, is embedded in it, completely embedded in this oneness, not separate from it, not transcendent from the world. Not it's, it's one thing of which this is an element in relationship to everything else, which is also the one thing, but arising as that and as mm -hmm. that and as the plant and as the sun and as the ground under my feet. And so that there's this visceral connectivity and in, and uh, imminence to it. So that the same experience shifted and it's better actually and it was much more like i remembered it was much more like early experiences i had mm. of awakening when i before way before i experienced non-duality they were they were much more like that i had to learn to see it in this mother other way of being outside and, and is it is it more like feeling uh, some kind of i don't know how to say it better some kind of energy in yourself and other people and other living things where you can say this energy is the same? I don't see it like that particularly. No, I don't see it as the same energy or anything. I think energy is quite a difficult word to tie down. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, it's more like, so, so this is an abstract thought. I, I really like it, but it, 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 it probably take a long time to really make much sense of it. But when I say the one, I mean what we refer to by the number one. I just mean one. It's, it's a one. And that one has been differentiated into all of this. And it's all the information which has differentiated the one, which has the quality of what? Just being one. <laughs> There's nothing. There's nothing. And the mm. evolution of the universe is the process of differentiating of something which is just the one in relationship to itself, the one as two, into everything. So that the one is not some the one, it's like, it's the simplest, simplest thing you could possibly imagine, but it's become everything. And it's not like that's real and this isn't, because this is the one, but this is the one, it's now everything, mm. it's all real. And it's and it, and the more emergent aspects of it feel more real, I think. Which is why when we touch these really these these spiritual experiences, they feel amazing because they're right on the leading edge of that process of becoming more, becoming more, becoming more. And that's a that that that's what we respond to. It's an amazing thing when we do that. So. To me, it's like, okay, maybe the, maybe the next part of the journey is we recognize the value of our individuality, but also our connection with everything. Mm. And the tragedy of this 
little blip of non-duality, which will pass. It's already changed beyond. You it know. gets worse, I think. Do you think so? Maybe it is. Maybe it's yeah, still, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, but, but uh, yeah, but it will it will go over because it's it's there's something good in there, but it's got this dark nihilistic thing going on, and it mimics. Or, no, that's not fair. It, it it reflects, or it's a, it's a it's a it's a very resonant. Let me say it like that, with the kind of misanthropic approach to science, which is the dominant ideology amongst the educated in the West, mm. because they're both misanthropic. You know, the the, the, the and I love science. I think it's amazing. But the same, a bit like with the non-duality. Look, I want the, the oneness and the, 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 oh, there's a lot of stuff in there which is a value. And then this, uh, and then over here with the science, the same. It's like, look, that's incredible what we've learned. I mean, um, unbelievable. But with this reductionist idea that will yeah. go, oh, you've got, you know, it'll also go. You've got no, you think you're agreeing with that, but really it's just chemicals in your body and those are really just atoms and those are really just quantum, you know, and you are nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's and, the same. And, and, and yeah. your soul is really just your brain. Your brain is just chemicals. Your, your opinions are just a product of in, automatic reactions on a physical level. All of that. Yeah. And the same thing. So they're, they're kind of kin. So it was no surprise this non-duality took off because yeah. the space had been created for it by this very negative version of science. It's not science. It's a philosophy which has become associated with science. Yeah. Just like this isn't spirituality, it's a it's a, a philosophy that's got associated with it. Yeah, yeah. And that's why so we need true. a new one. That's why we need a new one. I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this too, because I'm also not a fan of this version of science you are talking yeah. uh, of, and these non-duality teachers they like to take this scientific approach and use it as kind of proof for their theories. Yeah. You know, like these Liebert experiments in the 80s or whatever, when, the, you know? I do know them. And, and the irony is that, that he drew the complete opposite yeah. conclusions from them. Yeah. He, yeah. he didn't see, that, see it in that way at all. And, and, and what, these, what these experiments, what they show is reflection. They show that most of what you do, you don't reflect on. And that's a good mm. thing. But when you reflect, it slows it down. Mm. You know, consciousness is a expensive thing in terms of time and energy. You know, if, 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 if I had to stop and think about everything I'm saying to you before I said it, the conversation would be much slower, but because I'm willing to just say it, it's fast. So, but if I, if I'm, if I've got a real problem that I need to work on or a choice that's important, it takes time. So what you see with those experiments is give people time to reflect and and there will be a gap in their thinking because it takes time yeah that's all it shows and you know and 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 also again you have this prejudice that somehow the person isn't the whole system it's only the conscious bit rather than going no you're the whole system it's still you choosing it's just you chose it unconsciously Mm. And if you, you know, and, that, and that's what you do mostly. And, yeah. and which is why you need to become more conscious sometimes. When you make bad choices, you have to become conscious. But you wouldn't want to be conscious of everything, would you? That would drive you nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think what's really, what's interesting um, in, in terms of this depersonalization stuff and what um, made me very anxious was that I was realizing how much I was doing uh, subconsciously. Mm -hmm. um, and because of these teachings, I concluded, oh, okay, this means I am just a meat robot and I <laughs> cannot influence anything. I am the divine puppet thing, you know. Yeah. Um, but now I understand this was an interpretation. But I really saw how much we do unconsciously sure or subconsciously and but but that's not bad no. um it's very useful because uh, yeah everything will take so much time <laughs> if you just i mean just 
I always want people to just say, look, you're taking in so much information. Just, just to keep myself upright in the chair and not fall over. I'm monitoring my movements all the time, compensating. When I walk on something that's not quite flat, I have to compensate for the movement there. And if I don't, I fall over. But generally, you compensate and you make a decision. Something happens over there. Is it a danger? I have to be able to compensate. All, all of this information, like I said, just to look at the room, to know what everything is. So if you said to me, what is that? I would go, oh, it's that. I understand it. I know its role. I know why it's there. There's a huge amount of information. And thank God, most of it can be done unconsciously. It's like learning to drive. You know, you can, when you learn to drive, you have to make it conscious. Mm -hmm. really slowly oh the brake the thing and no pay attention otherwise you could kill yourself once you know how to drive you can drive listen to music have a conversation eat a sandwich because you know how to do it unless suddenly it was really bad weather mm -hmm. then you'd have to make it conscious because you yeah. could make a mistake so now you're back to zzz, zzz. that's it it's just as simple as that and then the art surely becomes knowing I'm doing something unconsciously and it's not good. I need mm. to examine it. I need to dig it out. I need to reflect on it and I need to change it. Yeah. And therefore it's very important that you think of yourself as someone who can <clears throat> choose things. Absolutely. It's I, I, you could make a, you could make an argument for saying it is the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely central. And to deny that, To deny your agency is an awful, awful thing to do. Whereas what we, you know, it's a bit like what we need to say to each other is really appreciate and make the most of your agency. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like with thinking, you know, it's like if you tell people not to think, they will not become enlightened, they'll become stupid. We need to think more and we need to think better. Yeah. But we don't need to think all the time and we don't want to think bad. But we want to think healthy and we want to think better that's yeah. you know yeah and it's important to work on on that i had this thing cc i don't know um if you've um, heard me talk about it but i did this thing in one of my books where when my little daughter was young and i suddenly thought would i teach these things to my daughter And if so, why would I think about teaching them to anyone else? For instance, you know, would I say to my daughter, oh, darling, I'm a bit worried about you going to school because I, I don't want you to, I want you to stop thinking because then you'll be enlightened. Mm. No, I wouldn't say that. Why wouldn't I say that? Would I say to her, you don't really exist, darling. So I don't want you to get confused. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that to her. Why not? Would I say to her, don't become attached, honey, you know, Daddy, I love you. Yeah, but don't become attached. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't do that. Why not? Yeah. But I say to her, you have no free will, hon. So, you know, whether you do go to bed when I tell you or not, it's, it's not up to you. <laughs> I wouldn't say that to her. Yeah, imagine this. I wouldn't it's say. crazy. Yeah, it is literally crazy. Yeah. And when you see that, and I, that example really works for me because you can just see That is yeah. crazy. Yeah. And what we need to be doing is the opposite of that. Yeah. What, what's interesting is I remember there was um, a conversation between a radical non-duality teacher and someone else I don't remember. And this person asked the teacher the same question. Like, would you say to your child that you don't have free will? And it was so interesting because the teacher said, I don't have any child, so I cannot respond to this. <laughs> and I was like, what? You can't imagine this. What's wrong with you? And yeah, he was like, I, no, no, I don't have a child. So let's talk about something else. <laughs> and I mean, for sure, he can imagine this. And for sure, he would know that this is not a good thing to do to say this to you but they cannot confess um this so my biggest hope with all of this personally is that those that have been through the experiences like you and jessica and many other people that i've now met that there's a way of um i imagine there must be a lot of people who become cynical 
because I see that when people get involved in spirituality and it goes sour, not just with this one, but other forms as well, it's very easy to just think, God, that was just a lot of rubbish. And part of what I want to try and do is go, it's not a lot of rubbish. There's something really precious in it. Like you said mm. about reconnecting with the soul. There's something really precious here. And there always has been, even though, even though the ways in which human beings have interpreted it in the past now need to be left behind because they may have been cutting edge in the past, but they're not now. And we need to develop a new understanding which can unite the best of science, the best of spirituality into a new narrative, one which is open-ended, constantly evolving, changing, doesn't, doesn't tie you into something, um, but which allows us as human beings to explore these really amazing um, spiritual experiences and states in a healthy way mm. and let that play into an appreciation of the things we've already got the ability you know so we make we we, we mean we have the ability to make choices let's turn it up let's make more choices make better choices we can think wonderful let's have good conversations together and with ourselves whereby let's let's have the opposite of being stuck in the idea of the truth let's have hey here's a new way of seeing it and it looks better what do you think wow that's great that excitement of discovery and of new yeah. things let's have that yeah yeah that sounds beautiful really yeah i think i so. like this yeah. i like that too <laughs> yeah yeah it's so sad when people get stuck into i know the truth and i was there also i tried to convince people that uh, they are robots before it felt so bad to me really <laughs> it's crazy but I just just treasure that moment cc <laughs> <laughs> just treasure that moment somebody who thinks they have no free will because they're a robot trying to convince another person who has no free will to agree or not yeah. that they're a robot the whole thing is like a monty python sketch i mean it's just completely <laughs> ridiculous yeah that's true <laughs> that's so true but you in this moment you you don't reflect this yeah that's right. it's it's just yeah. like this that's right. <laughs> yeah yeah and that's... Well, well done for getting out well done <laughs> yeah thank you thank you yeah and that, and i i do know that takes courage you know it take you know it does i mean in my own much smaller way you know <laughs> turning around and acknowledging first to myself and then publicly that i cha completely changed my view on consciousness yeah it's like whoa that's yes that's uh must have been hard too because as a you you i think no you weren't a teacher but you i don't know you talked about this stuff a lot in the yeah, a lot yeah in yeah. in the yeah I, th I think to be honest i got so good at thinking about it and talking about it that i saw what was wrong with it in, <laughs> I... <laughs> I think that was what happened. It's great when this happens. I don't think it happens often. And um, if then you have the courage to stand up and say to a lot of people, hey, I was wrong. That's And I wrote books about it. And these books are wrong. You say not everything is wrong, but no, you know, um, that's really, yeah, a great thing and takes a lot of courage. And yeah, and it is a good thing. I, I've come to see that now, because it enables. Because that's what we need to do. We need we need to model that for each other. Mm. That you can go. Oh yeah, I was wrong about that. I mean, and, and honest to goodness, I mean, I'm sixty five next week. I think it's next week, something like that, which seems crazily old. And I've been doing this for quite some time now, intensely. And I should say my sixties are dominated by looking at how wrong I've been in a million ways. Just looking back going, wow, wow. Oh, look at that. How wrong I was there. And, and, and it does feel to me, if you can't look back, if you reach a ripe old age and you can't look back, you know, and realize how wrong you've been, what have you been, you've been doing with your life? Because every time you evolve, you go, oh, I was wrong about that in some way, you know? 
in some yeah, way. Yeah, uh, it's cool how this is a really positive thing for you, but it could also be that that it makes you depressed somehow to think, oh my God, I was wrong in so many ways. It is humbling, uh, I tell yeah. you. It, you know, it <laughs> is. It is humbling. And I don't just mean like philosophically here. I just mean, you know, that that just looking at the, the, the insights of a younger Tim was lesser than an older Tim. And it wouldn't surprise me at all of, you know, that if I live to be a lot older, that that will happen again. Mm. I used to have this thing. I don't know. I'd be, I was fascinated. I have been all my life by um, death and worked with death a lot and near death experiences. And one of the common things that people report, I've not had one, but um, in near death experiences is the life review where you just see the whole of your life. And I'd always thought until I got old, I'd always thought, oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. You die and you see your life. And now I'm looking at it and going, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> that could yeah. be a bit of a shock. <laughs> I feel this and I am not that old, but uh, yeah. yeah so I, I think the key thing is to do it while you're alive, get used to it and, and, and to enjoy that sense of, of, you know, moving on, forgiving yourself and, and learning and, and trying a new thing and, 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 and supporting each other in doing that. Yeah. And really be open to other possibilities and seeing yeah. life in different ways and all this stuff. And, don't get stuck in one perspective. It's boring. It, the, the key <laughs> thing about that and, and the key thing of CC for me is like, it's like you're always looking for the best perspective. That's right. But mm. if you can only see it from one perspective, you have no idea if that's the best perspective. Yeah. You can only go, no, this is the best one, I think, right now, if you can compare it with other ones. <laughs> and the more the more different ways you can see it, the more choice you have to go, this is the best one. Mm. So if you get, if you get stuck in a narrow view, you lose the ability to choose the best one. Yeah, that's true. So. Yeah, great. So inspiring to talk to you really. It's lovely. I've really enjoyed meeting you immensely. <laughs> um, Maybe because I think we talked a long time. Yeah, we did. Um, if it's okay for you, I would like to meet you again and talk about near-death experiences because I have a lot of questions I would like to ask you, if you, if you like. I would be delighted. Um, it was really nice talking to you. So let's okay. let's write emails. Okay. okay? Good. Right. Thank you very right. much. See you again soon. Yeah, see you. Bye.